Well, hello, you bearded bastards, and welcome back once again to Locum Kor Zugabla Lokukun Obak, Spear Cavern, the Grand Granite Shrine of Pillars, and things are going just swimmingly here in the fortress. Our fortress of eight dwarves, remember? That's right, keep in mind we have a new member, little Emmy, child of Boggy and Tinny. Right now she's hauling a door to her bedroom. The dwarves are working together to get it nicened up for her. Gotta try to get her place brought into line with the other dwarven quarters. It'll get there. Actually, it's looking pretty darn good right now. She likes it well enough, that's for sure. Anywho, another big project we have in our list of things to do is get down here and explore this new cavern lair. We just made this fantastic discovery down here, and we're very eager to make further discoveries as well. Just hoping those forgotten beasts don't attack us too quickly. That would really muck things up. As you can see, we have planned a wall around the periphery down here. It's going to take quite some time to get it all done, but it should be straightforward enough. The cavern ceiling in this area isn't quite as tall as it is up in the higher cavern layer there. It is a fairly large area we're trying to encircle here, much larger than that other cavern. We're trying to get a wall around this area down here to the south that will encapsulate this layer right here, which leads up to the higher cavern layer in the fortress, as well as this large area up here to the north. It's going to be quite a project, but... Well, I figured we'd try to grab as much as we can before the beasts move in. Speaking of which, what is this? Something we've not yet seen before, a cavern beastie, though this one seemed to be a rather uh, a benevolent beast. Somewhat, anyways, let's, let's hope. Here we have a Adralfa, large animals, massive even. We haven't yet seen them here in the fortress, but they are around, they are known to our people. And yes, thankfully they are rather friendly like a giant underground cow or giraffe or something, you know? They were described as being large, long-bodied grazers with thick manes that feed on the top of tower cap mushrooms deep under the earth. They could be quite valuable if we managed to trap them and butcher them, put those bones and the skin to use, plus all that meat too, though of, you know, as I was saying recently, we're not really in need of food around here. But that fur, hmm, lustrous. Might be nice to get our hands on it, though I'm not sure we should worry about it. I would like to know, though, why they are so hell-bent on trying to get into our fortress. They keep tentatively approaching the stairway that leads up to the fortress, but then running away in a panic when they see a dwarf. Well, we never said they were intelligent creatures, did we? <laughs> they are large, though. They could injure someone if they wanted to. Might have to deal with them if they don't move off soon. Gotta do what you gotta do. Anyways, back to the tasks at hand. We have to get out there and explore those caverns, don't we? And we have just the dwarf to do it. It's a gutter. Remember recently we were talking about how he's a bit dissatisfied here in the fortress. Gutter wants some more excitement. He wants to fight. He wants to be bathed in the glory of battle. And despite him taking down that forgotten beast recently by himself, it's still not enough, it seems. And so yes, he's getting armored up and he's going to be acting as our scout on our expedition here. And might I add, we are totally unconcerned with his safety. He is a much more than capable dwarf, as we've seen. He's going to do just fine out there. And hopefully this puts him where he's got to be mentally. Gets him a bit more stable. We'll see, though. He's been fluctuating violently with his mood these days. Okay, having a look out here, it looks... I mean, fairly standard, and not very dissimilar to the upper cavern layer. Besides this moss that's everywhere. Got some honeycombed chambers, not a whole heck of a lot of water, which is good. There are an awful lot of trees in here, which, uh, it's good, I guess. It's a resource, we could put it to use. Hmm, and what's this? It looks like Gutter's discovered a downward passage. Very interesting. I bet it leads to another cavern layer farther down. Of course, hopefully no creatures have made their home inside this tunnel. Could be a bit dangerous. Let's have a look. Oh yes, there we go. There is in fact another cavern layer down here. Though this one appears to be filled with water and absolutely choked with mushroom trees. In fact, there's a black cap right here, which is completely in the way of the slope that leads down to the cavern floor. Gutter can't get past it right now. Well, it looks like Gutter can kind of see a bit of land over there. Just over to the east. The caves might stretch out farther in that direction. We'll have to make a path first, though. That'll take a bit of doing, but no worries. Nothing we can't manage, I'm sure. Ah, but yes, gutter. Realizing we set out to explore the second cavern layer, not the third. Let's get back down there and see what's going on. Yeah, not seeing all too much out here. Nothing very interesting anyways. Lots of moss, lots of fungus trees, and the occasional gem cluster. Unfortunately, this cavern layer is very, um, uh, angled, I guess is the word. Some portions of it are very low, and other portions are very high. It's not a nice flat expanse like that upper cavern layer. Makes it a little bit more difficult to spot those obsidian clusters, the ones with the gems and the treasures inside, or demons, I suppose. That being said, we are spotting a few here and there. It's going to take a bit to detect them all, I think, but 
we will get there. Garner, I am sorry you didn't fight anything down here, but, well, there's always tomorrow. We'll get that mood managed before long. For now, though, just head home. Take a load off. Thank you very much, my friend. Now then, we have some stuff to attend to up in Spear Cavern, but just on our way up, we are noticing something interesting here, fairly interesting. We have some cave moss here, as well as some under lichen. Spreading into the upper caverns, it seems, must be some particularly potent spores down there. Maybe cracking into those cavern layers equalized the air pressure a bit and they were kind of sucked up here, or maybe they were carried in by the dwarves. That makes sense too. I'm curious how much this stuff will spread. Very interesting. Anywho. We have something else a bit interesting over here. It looks like we've managed to snag our own Dralfa. Was caught in one of our cage traps and the crab trained it up. Quite a friendly fellow. We got it out of that cage so it can graze in the moss over here. Didn't want it to starve to death, of course. Oh, where's it running? It's running off in a panic. Yeah, not too sure where it's getting to or what spooked it. Having a look around, I don't see anything right now. Maybe it's just a fairly uh, skittish fellow. That could well be. Probably gonna have to butcher it. Just the way it's gonna go. <laughs> No sense in having too, too many animals around. We'll see, though. We'll see. Dwarves kind of got their hands full at the moment. You're lucky for now, Dralva. And having a look over here, we have another interesting little beastie. In fact, quite a few of them. It looks like we have some crundles down in the middle cavern. Terrible, annoying little creatures. Kind of like a mix between a squirrel and a raccoon up on the surface. They like to pick through your trash and, you know, just kind of cause mischief. And they are all over the place down here. One big difference is that these creatures here have large horns and claws. They can do quite a bit of damage for such a tiny creature. And of course, there's also the fact that they pop up in giant packs most of the time. It tends to make them a bit more dangerous. Individually, though, they're pretty much nothing. No big concern. For taming purposes, though, they don't really give you a lot of meat. They're pretty tiny. Can't get leather from them either. Their hides are too frail and scaly. But though you can't really use them for meat or skin, crundles are prolific egg layers. They lay an awful lot of eggs. And if we have a look here, you can see we have our hands on a couple of crundles right now. A couple males and a female, all tamed by the crab, and they're being put in this pasture by Emmy. Yeah, what the heck? Let's see how many eggs we can get from them. It'll be an interesting project, to say the least. Having a look back down into the middle cavern layer, it looks like our southern wall is getting there. Still got a bit to go, but it's coming right along. Also noticing some vomit up here. Crundle vomit, to be specific. Those little bastards are really pestering our dwarves. Gonna have to get some more cage traps built, I think troublemakers. That's enough being distracted by Crundle vomit, though. You know what they say, spend your time fighting forgotten beasts and eventually you get devoured by Crundles. That's a dwarven adage right there. We've been focusing on the big projects around here and avoiding the boring small things. And they've been kind of piling up in the background. For example, up here in Spear Cavern proper, we have this tunnel outside our homes. And at a glance, you'll note that it's completely stuffed with items. We kind of wanted to move our items into the fortress, but didn't really have a good place for it. So that's why it's all in here. But that being the case, we need to put it uh, somewhere better. And I think it's time that we start moving items down below each home. Like in the crab's quarters here, we're gonna put a smelter as well as a metalsmith forge, and then stockpiles for stone and bars. Gonna do the same for Wisp's place, and the same goes for Queen Bee's quarters and Tinny and Boggy's area. Queen Bee's gonna get some lumber and furniture put in her place, and Boggy and Tinny are just gonna take some extra furniture in theirs. They don't really have a heck of a lot of space down there with Emmy's quarters, but that's fine. And the same will go for Gutter and Pop's quarters. Got a bunch of siege equipment and mechanisms going under Gutter's place, and Pop has graciously allowed her place to be used as a jeweler's workshop, even though she's not really a jeweler. She didn't care that much. So it works out. Our hope in doing this is that in the future, we'll be more efficient. It's hard to get stuff done when everything's so spread out. We should have done this a long time ago, really. Something else we had touched on briefly before getting distracted by Emmy's birth was our sheep situation. They're all down here now. All of them. Completely safe and sound. Each dwarf has a nice amount of floor fungus and now cave moss and under lichen in their quarters out in their, their little yard area. And so the sheep are happy out there. Nice and content. We just bring them down here every once in a while to get shorn and, you know, handle that wool. A pretty straightforward process. Seems to be working out rather well. Back to the idea of our infrastructure and the fortress layout. It's a mess. Just all around. We've had the same layout since the very beginning. We've kind of just let it naturally evolve. And so the dwarves take a very long time to get from the upper fortress down to the very lowest caves. Like a very, very long time. Just to put it into perspective here, we're going to take a little tour of Spear Cavern, courtesy of Kinney, 
our expedition leader. And we're going to start our tour up here on the surface. We can see a rather plain little stairway that leads down to the fortress that we've been using since day one. Now she's heading down here to our old fortress past some cage traps. You remember this place, right? Got the office below, and then there's a winding tunnel below that that leads down to Spear Cavern proper. You can see how long this tunnel is, too. From the surface down to Spear Cavern, it's quite a trek. But here we are, yep, just going around here, across this narrow bridge, and down another winding tunnel. This here leads down to the Cobalt Room, and to our barracks, and the original Ballista Hall. Oh right, and the competition gem chamber there, with the uh, opals still on display. Past that, through the barracks, past this forgotten beast carcass, and then beyond that we have our animal cages. Got a bunch of armored up dwarves here on Crundle Watch. Bastards have been quite a nuisance, but yes, we're passing by them out to the first cavern layer here the upper caverns, heading down to the south through this gate here, and down the stairway that leads down to the middle cavern lair. This stairway is quite long too, one of the single longest stretches in Spear Cavern I believe. Hopefully you're getting a sense of how long it takes to get down to the third cavern lair now. Here we are out in the middle cavern lair, all that green blue moss greeting us, the strange fungus trees, black caps, and tunnel tubes. Yes, if we go past all that up here to the northwest, we have that downward passage, remember? Leads down to the third cavern layer, right here. So there you go. That's our current quickest path from the surface down to the third cavern layer. Unacceptable, I'm sure you'll agree. Back up to Spear Cavern right here. Our original plan was to have this chamber lead directly up to Rofa's shrine after we killed the monster. Here, if we look up over here, up to the north, you can see that tunnel that leads upwards up this ramp that goes up, 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 and here we can see the beginning of that planned route that goes up through the aquifer and was originally going to wind around into the shrine right here. But we really don't have any interest in killing that creature anymore. We like Rofa now. It's our guardian beast, an icon of the fortress. But we do need a quick way up to the surface, so I think we're just going to make a path up to the north and just, you know, have it kind of be nearby. Additionally, I think we should make some baffles around this shrine here. Or maybe just a straight up wall, too. A nice protective structure. Frankly, I'm surprised the merchants haven't arrived and killed Rofa yet. They've got a bunch of guards, and some of those guards are a little audacious sometimes. Remember, there was an incident quite a while ago where Rofa killed one of the guards. That could happen again. We would hate to see it. And so how about this? We have this tunnel that leads off to our old first fortress, and then this unfinished ramp. We're going to continue upwards just like this. You see that? Right up here to the surface. It'll be heading through the aquifer, so that's going to get a bit muddy, I think. But it'll work out. It'll work out. We need a quick way down to the fortress, and that will certainly service that. Got to figure out some cage traps, though. Don't want any beasties getting down. Giant vultures and the like. They're still pretty common out there. I suppose it's my fault for mentioning beasties, eh? I was thinking it seemed a little too quiet lately. It's about damn time. Let's see what we're dealing with. The forgotten beast, Avi, has arrived. An enormous quadruped composed of mud. It has four short horns in its squirms and fidgets. Beware, it's webs. Nah, nope. Can't fight this one. Not the beast with webs. Never the beasts with webs. We're gonna have to come up with some sort of a solution for this thing or else we're not gonna be able to get out to those caves anymore. Unfortunately, we were a little bit too slow with that wall down there. It came out of the middle caves, but luckily we did get that top wall done. We had some preparations. I thought the creature would just kind of stop at the door like the previous ones, but no, it just uh, kind of turned around and is heading back to the middle caves, it seems. Well, that's a shame. We were kind of banking on doing that ballista idea, the one that we had raised recently, building a little ballista kind of next to the door and shooting it. This beast's a little bit different though, a little bit more frantic, I guess. It wants to get out our dwarves and it will not stop until it finds a way in. That's not good. That is not good at all. Again, we can't fight this beast. We would stand no chance against those webs. Well, you know, I can't help but wonder what would happen if we open up this gate again. If we could entice it into standing by this gate for just a few seconds longer, then maybe we could get a shot off. Really, we cannot fight this creature. You know what they say, a silken cloak is fine and dandy, but a beast with silk, they'll kill you dead. <laughs> no signs of that beast yet. Let's go have a look. Well, it did go back down to the middle caves briefly, but now it's in the upper caves once again. I didn't see it come back up, but here it is. Not too sure what it's doing, just kind of sloshing around in this water here, getting itself all gloopy. What a mess. I guess it's just kind of content to wander around for a while. Doesn't seem to have any interest in going for that gate, which is a shame. 
Well, I suppose we'll just keep working on this mini ballista hull over here. If it ever does come back, maybe we can fire at it. That'll be the hope. Otherwise, I don't know what the hell we're gonna do. Oh, actually. Okay, so opening up that gate does entice it back after a while. Assuming we can continue manipulating Avi like this, then at some point we should be able to get it in position to take a shot. Just hoping he doesn't find a layer and stop moving like that fiery snail that was up in our waterway. That'll create a whole bunch of other issues, won't it? Just be patient, Avi. Your time's a-coming. Oh, here we go. A beast pops up, we get a vague plan put in place, and then another beast pops up, right? Of course. Well, let's go have a look, see what we're dealing with. The forgotten beast, Galka Galka Atak, has come. A great tit mouse with lidless eyes. It has a spiral shell and it is ravening. Its eyes glow yellow. Its copper feathers are fluffed out. Beware its poisonous bite. Well, that's a unique looking beastie, isn't it? I don't think it's one we'll have to fear all that much. And yet, it does instill quite a bit of fear with those glowing yellow eyes, doesn't it? Poisonous bite is much easier to deal with than webs. Well, it is in the upper caves right now, just kind of flapping around, going from fungi wood tree to tower cap. The scent of dwarves fills its nostrils. It's on the hunt, looking for prey. Though it will find none in these caverns. If it keeps flapping around up here, though, what it's going to find is something a bit bigger than a dwarf, I wager. In fact, little bird, I think you're in a bit more trouble than you realize. absolutely phenomenal. It is very rare to see a couple beasts fight like that, and to have it turn out in our favor too. Exceptional. Galka Galka Atak has won, and has also saved Spear Cavern from a silken death. Will it survive its tremendous blood loss though? That's the question. Starting to get ideas of trying to capture this beast and maybe do something with it, but it's losing an awful lot of blood here. Gouting blood even. Also several of its body parts are smashed to pieces. Its beak, its legs, one of its wings. Yeah, this poor thing here. Let's go over that battle real quick. Well, honestly, the battle was a bit uh, muddy. And not just because of the muddy beast either, but when well, you have entries like the Forgotten Beast gores the Forgotten Beast in the upper body. I mean, I, I, we can assume that's the muddy horned beast hitting the bird, right? But other ones just, I mean, difficult to tell what's going on. The Forgotten Beast bites the Forgotten Beast. Well, you know, one thing I thought the bird had going for it was that it could not be caught in the webs, but I don't think that's the case at all. Seeing several entries here where the forgotten beast is caught up in the web, I assume that's the bird. If a dwarf gets caught in a web, then they go down entirely and they cannot do anything at all until they are free of the web. But usually by that point, they've been murdered by the forgotten beast. But it looks like our titmouse friend was able to escape pretty well several times over the course of that battle. Yeah, I mean... The best I could say about it is they went back and forth ferociously through that entire combat, each taking several massive wounds, and then it all finished when Galka kicked our muddy friend in the upper body, causing the part to collapse. Hmm. Excellent work, yes, you've really saved a day here, Galka. Not that you intended to. We know that much. You damn monster. You know, you gotta kind of feel bad for it, just laying here on the cavern floor, bleeding out like this. Kind of a sad thing to witness, but... Well, it's not dead yet. Here's hoping it recovers at some point, huh? It could well happen. It could. But yes, at this particular juncture, it is still bleeding. <sighs> hmm. Well, I was going to say bleeding heavily, but maybe not. 
Actually, it looks like Galka is up and about now, moving around, not bleeding anymore. Hmm. Okay, okay. Well, yes, maybe we'll have to try something clever with this beastie. Capture it in a pen or something. Hmm. We'll have to be careful, of course, obviously. But it is a possibility. And I suppose if we're going to do something, we better do it quickly before another beast pops up, huh? That would be smart. Well, okay. Back in the fortress here. Let's figure out what we're doing. We have several crabby dwarves these days, just as a heads up. Nobody's too, too bad, but we've been working way too hard lately. So with that in mind, I'm not too sure how big a project we're willing to take on right now. But if we were to take on some sort of a project, back to the idea of streamlining our fortress. Well, we're looking at our main meeting hall right here. And the way up to the surface is gonna be right here, this ramp that leads upwards. But how about those caverns? To get down there right now, we have to go over this bridge and then down that long, twisting corridor. And so what we're thinking, or I should say what we're implementing right now, is a way down from this meeting hall. If we head down these side stairways right here, it leads us to our kitchens and food storage. Down below that, it's an empty chamber, the top level of our temple, which we still need to gussy up quite a bit. But then right in the center of that area, we now have a stairway that leads downwards. And it goes down quite a ways uh, to here which I'm realizing is extremely dangerous. Actually, this stairway was in place before those Forgotten Beasts showed up. Like, we didn't just dig this out. In fact, looking right over here, Galka, the giant tit mouse, is right over here. That thing could have just flapped straight up into our fortress beforehand. <laughs> but I don't think it's going to be a problem now. It appears its wing is broken pretty badly. This is really a bad thing to have just half finished, huh? Like, extremely bad. Um, well, anyways... Yeah, that's gonna be our stairway that leads down to the caverns. We're gonna make it a little bit nicer, obviously, a little bit more secure too, hopefully. And yes, if we continue downwards, quite a ways downwards, you can see it leads to the middle caves, and then down even farther, it leads to the third cavern layer too. Hmm. You know, <laughs> yeah, really stupid. A winged beast could pop up on any of these levels and get directly into our fortress right at this moment. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Guess we should seriously start thinking of some plans. Okay, well... Back up to our temple. One of our big problems right now, we've mentioned it several times, it hasn't been a huge problem yet, is that it takes way too long for our dwarves to get ready for battle. That's because our barracks is way off to the side right now. So I thought we could have a new barracks right here, right underneath the temple, so that if dwarves are up in the meeting hall, they could just scurry down those stairs, get right here to the barracks, get all prepared, grab some food up from that food storage. It should be pretty quick, right? And I am also thinking that another cool feature that we should have in our fortress is a little arena. That'd be a really neat idea, I think. And the entire reason I'm going over this is because I thought maybe we could take that Forgotten Beast and put it in a pen off to the side of this proposed arena. But now that I've said this all, it's gonna take way too long to get that done and like, well, as I said, our dwarves aren't the happiest right now. And Idrath knows it's gonna take another year at least to get this project done if we were to set forward into it. But an even bigger issue for the Forgotten Beast out here is that another Forgotten Beast is bound to show up before very long at all. And the chance that a new one could kill Galka in its weakened state, I'd say that's pretty high right now. Right now, Galka's not doing too great. So if we're gonna get this beast, we have to come up with a quick and sloppy solution. And so what we're going to do is come over here and build this little stairway down, right on the other side of this southern wall down in the upper caves. Looking down a bit, you can see this small and, well, very sloppy chamber. No frips, no frills, no nothing. Just has this one tunnel that leads up behind our wall, and this one that leads down to nothing right now, but it's gonna lead up to the outside of the wall, right out here. We're gonna get this ready with a couple of doors, but then when it's all set, we're gonna open it up, and hopefully that beast will sense that it has a passage into our fortress, and we could just, you know, kind of trap it in here, then close up the doors. Shouldn't be too bad. Okay, and there we go. Chamber is all set. Got a couple doors in place. Now that beast is going to be able to break down these doors. But once it's in here, we'll build a couple of proper walls outside the doors. It'll be a less finicky process than linking up some gates to levers with mechanisms and all that. Again, quick and sloppy. That's what we're going for. Just got to get this tunnel dug out here. And there we have it just like that. Easy enough. It's all opened up now. Just having a little glance over here. We can already see Galka coming on in. Excellent. Okay. Oh, maybe not. Looks like Galka, for some reason, has stopped out here at our gate, trying to break the gate down instead. That is weird, isn't it? There's a nice little tunnel you can just come straight into the fortress through over here. Why don't you come on over, you dumb bastard? Okay, so now what we're going to do is build a little wall over here, with the hopes of just, uh, maybe uh, Galka will sense that the door can't be gotten through or something, I don't know. I don't really know what it's trying to do right now. But, we just did see Pop go down over here. Pop, you might want to not go out there, you dumb dumb. What the hell's wrong with you? Well, okay, Galka just came down. All right, let's unlock that door, see what happens. Oh, there we go. Okay, now that we have Galka down in there, all we have to do is build some floors up top here. That should get it nice and sealed up. And Pop, let's not build the floor from underneath, you dumb dumb. What the hell you doing, huh? Get out of here, will you? Let's try again. 
Done deal, easy enough. And the second entrance as well. Looks like we've built a wall on the second entrance. That was a mistake, but serves the same purpose. Okay, there we go. Galka is preserved. It can't hurt our dwarves, and we can just keep it safe in here until we think of something better to do with it. You just wait here, you big monster. We will come up with something appropriately uh, ingenious to do with you. I hope. Now then, dwarves, top two. We have something very, very important to do. We have to get this stairway over here sealed up and completed. Well, maybe not completed, but just in a more secure state, please. Our fortress is actually in a good amount of danger right now. I know I'm playing it off as kind of like, oh, you know, it's no big deal, but it's, it's a big deal. After we have control of this vertical stairwell, then we can do some more fancy stuff with it. But right now, just trying to get the most basic securities in place. And you know, I don't think this is going to be too bad. It's already going along pretty quickly. We're just getting some rather ramshackle walls up using wood and boulders and stuff. It'll be serviceable. And there we go. Okay. And so that's going to give us a nice safe path from our meeting hall down through our kitchens and our temple. Mind the mole blood. There was an incident. Then we have our barracks and then this long stairwell that leads down to the upper caves. And we're actually digging out a tunnel down there too with a side passage that leads down to the middle caves. Yes, it's coming right along. And looking down a bit, yes, you can see it's completely undefended down here. But shouldn't take too long to get it in a nice secure state. I'm thinking. I think it's going to work out pretty well. At least now we know we're going to be safe from... Forgotten beasts. <laughs> Probably a good thing, too. Let's go see what we're dealing with. The forgotten beast Lurdy has come. A gigantic mockingbird with lidless eyes. It has a pair of branching antenna and it has a bloated body. Its brass feathers are patchy. Beware, it's deadly spittle. Okay. Hmm. Strangely similar to Galka, I'd say. A large, brownish, bird-like monster. But where Galka had a poisonous bite, this one has a spittle. Which usually isn't that bad. In terms of beast effects, at least. It's kind of like a ranged attack, you know? It can kind of shoot a burst of some sort of fetid beast slime at our dwarves. It can do quite a bit of damage. Especially to an unarmored dwarf like Emmy, say. So we're just going to have to hope she keeps her head down for the time being. All of our dwarves are getting armored up right now, except for Emmy. They're going to fight this thing. Oh, let's uh, check in. I hear some commotion. Yes, down here in the middle cave, still taking care of some Rutherers, a creature we've not yet seen. Yes, this is a savage monster. Doesn't seem to be coming straight towards our fortress either. Might be for the best. We still don't have that stairway secured, and it is down in the middle caves, which are, you know, open. The thing could potentially fly straight up into our fortress. Well, for the time being, I do suspect that monster is going to come through our shrine up through the tunnel that leads down to the middle caves. And so this is where I've called all of our soldiers. But as we can see, they're not here quite yet. Their armor and weapons are still down in our old barracks. So it's taking them quite a bit to get all sorted. I'm glad we're finally getting this fixed, but not quite fixed yet. Come on, dwarves, let's go. Hurry up. At the moment, Emmy is down in her bedroom, just sleeping. Completely safe, no worries. She's out of harm's way, just in case you were worrying. Okay, looking back to our shrine, it looks like we do have some dwarves in place. It should keep us nicely defended if it does come up through here, assuming it does come up through here. I guess it doesn't have to come up through this particular passage, eh? I do not know where the monster went, though. I'm trying to keep an eye on it, but there's still a significant portion of the caves we've not yet discovered. Sneaky. Well, dwarves, you know what that means. I think we have to go hunting out in the caves. Exploration hunting. Like a bunch of humans, really. <laughs> As we've seen in the past, dwarven hunters usually go about setting up a fortress in the cave somewhere and letting the beasts come to them. It's much more efficient that way. But if the beast won't come in and we know it's out there, then, well, just call us a bunch of regular humans. <laughs> just shave your beards, dwarves. Let's go plant some crops up on the surface. <laughs> Imagine. All right, let's get out there. And good luck to you. Though I'm sure we won't need it. We all know what we're doing at this point. All 
Alrighty, now then, welcome to the end of the episode where we're going to start talking about some behind the scenes things, as usual. I've made up a list here of a few just random thoughts I had while making this episode, and I figure what the hell, we'll start with those. Right, well, uh, dogs. We have so many dogs up in our meeting hall, I'm sure you've noticed. Our original idea with them was to make our own breed of dogs, you know, like apparently that's a thing in Dwarf Fortress, I'm pretty sure it's still in the game, but like, I had seen it pre-Steam release, where if you bred certain animals of like a, a given color, they'd be more likely to retain that color in future generations. Same goes for certain like physical traits and stuff, I, uh, so I'm told anyways. And so that's what I mean by saying a breed of dog, right? But you know, it, since the Steam release came out, it's actually a little bit more difficult to manage your animals. Cause like when you're looking at your fortress mode, you can see all of your animals walking around, say like, you know, our meeting hall, all those dogs. It's easy enough just to click on one and see it's a little stat page there, right? And say I see one that, you know, it's uh, genetic properties aren't very great, says it's clumsy and slow and weak and frail and sickly. I'm gonna wanna butcher that one or at least geld it, right? But like, I can't do it from the fortress screen that I've found or from its little status page on the side. So I have to go back into like the list of all the animals in the fortress, start from square one, try to find that dog, right? It's impossible. And so how I've had to do it is go onto that list from the start, just go down and, and like, just remember, okay, we're starting at the top dog on the list, you know, check this one, make sure it's good. Then dog number two, I gotta make sure, you know, it's, it's a big pain in the butt. I've kind of given up on trying to create our own fortress breed of dog, honestly, just cause that system's a little bit slower than I remember. If I'm wrong about that, please let me know. But I don't think so. Hope it gets tweaked a little bit in the future. But we'll see. Uh, another thing, webs. This is our first webby beast we've seen in this fortress here. I don't recall if we've seen webby beasts in other fortresses I've done since the Steam release came out. If we have, they haven't been much of a problem. But like the dangerousness of web beasts cannot be understated ever. To the point where like, uh, I really feel like webs gotta be nerfed a little bit. And man, I've been saying that for years. Looks like I'm just ranting about game mechanics today. So be it. Webs stink. Like, it's kind of interesting to have certain monsters that you cannot fight, but the webs themselves are so massively damaging. It just seems a little strange, I guess. Like, I, I am more afraid of webs than I am fire or deadly dust or anything, really. I mean, and rightly so. They're terrible. What happens is that a dwarf gets webs on them, they are incapacitated, and then how it used to be anyways, and I believe it's still set up this way, but if a dwarf is webbed, then something attacking them automatically attacks their head. And in some cases, if the attacker has hands, we'll try to take their helmet off beforehand. And so this leads to a dead dwarf very quickly. It does not matter their skill or anything. I just feel like webs should simply slow down a dwarf or something, you know, like almost like the stun effect that can be imparted through combat. Make them a little bit slower or something, you know? When you get down to it, I know we've been dispatching these beats like they're nothing for the most part, but they can still be dangerous. You never know, one of them could just throw a curveball at you, get a lucky first hit in on one of your dwarves, and then you'll know, be down a dwarf. And you know, that's a risk that I'd be willing to take as a Dwarf Fortress player. You can't always win, but you shouldn't always lose either. And that's my problem with the Webby Beasts. You can't fight them. One big change that we saw in this episode that I really, really like about the Steam version is the difference in the cavern levels now. Is it always that way? Is it always the first cavern up on top has like the, the floor fungus and then the middle cavern has the moss and the low caves have the under lichen? It makes them so visually distinct. They were distinct enough in the past with like different kinds of mushroom and animals that could appear, but having that different ground cover in each level is an amazing visual difference. Really adds a lot of personality to each of the levels. I love it. Now back to the subject of our fortress here, just something I thought of at the end of this episode when that mockingbird popped up. I would really desperately like to do some more slow, low key things with our dwarves. Check in on their personal hobbies and crafts and collections, that sort of stuff. But man, it's like, we've had so much to do. I guess, I mean, <laughs> I don't really wanna turn this into griping about dwarf fortress again, but keeping your dwarves happy is always a pain in the butt. And in trying to get our fortress to be a bit more efficient, it's going to aid that end. Just gotta get there first, which, you know, it's not been too easy. I've been having a lot of trouble with this fortress in particular, trying to get the dwarves to use the barracks correctly. And I don't know if that's like a common thing that people are having problems with, but it seems like whenever I have an active barracks and I want them to put their equipment in the barracks when they're done training, they just, like, they will do it. 
but they will continuously go back to the barracks to like uh, store personal item or something like that. It's constant. They'll just keep going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So then I tried for a bit to just have them store their weapons and armor inside a stockpile in the um, barracks, but I don't know. It just got to be a big pain in the butt to the point where I was actually deleting the barracks every time I wanted them to stop training just so they wouldn't go in there anymore. Regardless, I think it's going to solve a lot of our problems if we put the barracks right below our meeting hall. A lot less travel in between. I hope we can get to a more slower paced vibe soon, especially before Emmy gets a lot older. She should be able to spend some more time with her family and extended family while she's young. Pretty important, right? Well, after we get that stairwell secure, then we will see what happens. I guess that finishes off this episode. Uh, just as a reminder, I noted it at the end of last episode, but I'm going to be working on something else for a couple weeks after this episode comes out. So if I disappear for a little bit again, that's where I am, working on a side project. I don't know if it's going to be done at the end of a couple weeks, but we'll see. Don't get your hopes up. Taking my time, and I thank you for your patience, it means a lot. Anywho, my bearded bastards, I thank you for joining me today. I really hope you enjoyed yourselves, and I certainly hope to see you next time here in Locum Cor Zugabla Lokukun. Obak, Spear Cavern, the Grand Granite Shrine of Pillars, and until next time, you bearded bastards. Spew.